Hey guys, this is Aishul and Aishul with Rollout Reviews, and today I'm doing something a little bit different. Uh, I wouldn't really call this a review, just because I don't think I'm in the place to be reviewing something like this properly, at least. Uh, this is the BSP V from Narika. Uh, it is a piece of scientific technology, um, and I believe it's meant to be used in a... Uh, uh, classroom environment uh, for scientific experiments and collecting data for uh, projects and things of the sort, but I am obviously going to be using this uh, technology and exploiting it for my uh, fun little marble shooting plastic toys. So, uh, one side here is in, in Japanese. I can only assume that whatever is being covered up by this sticker is the same as it is on this side, but uh, but in Japanese. I got this from Arbor Scientific, uh, as you can see. It's a self-contained photo gate. Um, and we'll get to exactly what that is in just a little bit here. Uh, opening this up, we have the instructions. We'll take a look at those in a second. It comes in a little... Uh, bubble wrap bag here just to keep it safe. Here are the instructions. Um, opening this up, you can see one side is in Japanese. <clears throat> and uh, I can't read any of that. And the other side is in English. Um, a lot of you know precautions, things to make yourself aware of, all of the uh, features, how to use it, um, what all of these sections are called. And, uh, yeah, make sure to read this before you get yourself into that. And here is the BSPV Photogate itself. Now it comes with a, a little piece of film on the top that you have to peel off just to keep it safe. Um, but it's very, very shiny. As you can see, BSPV. It's got a little LCD screen there. Uh, start button, select button. Uh, very, very simple. Um, inside, you can see it's got a uh, battery cover. This takes two AAA batteries. Uh, they're not included, so um, keep note of that. It has two little sensors on either side here. Well, four in total. It's got a little opening there. Very simple looking device, sort of a matte finish all the way around, so hitting it with things uh, won't damage it too much. Um, yeah, very simple, small little device. Now what this is used for is uh, it instantly measures the speed of an object that passes through it. Uh, this is obviously useful for uh, testing, I don't know, scientific-y uh, things. <laughs> Not really an expert on the subject, but I am obviously going to be using it to test the power levels of my beat them on. So, to turn this on, uh, once batteries are in, you just press one of these buttons, either one works, and um, as you can see, it's always going a little bit crazy there, but uh, as you can see, here it is turned on. Zero is displayed, a little one up here, and a blinking little meters per second down there. Uh, now, you can change the measurement that it records by holding down the select button. There you can see it changed to kilometers per hour and centimeters per second and then back to meters per second. Uh, so that can be pretty useful there. Also by just tapping this button um, well we haven't we haven't done that yet. So let's uh, let's just do some recordings here. By uh, pressing the start button, you can get started. Um, as you can see, it recorded the speed of that 2.78 meters per second. Um, let's do one more, and then I can actually properly show off that function that I was just about to. Again, uh, press the start button to reset it back to zero. As you can see, uh, that stopped blinking, and when you hit that, starts blinking again, meaning it's recording once more. Uh, by just tapping the select button, if we can get it here, come on. Oh, we have to stop recording for that to happen. Okay. All right. What's going on here? 
There we go. Um, it's not doing it. It's not doing it! I don't pretend like I know what I'm doing. All right, I got it working here. Um, I don't know how, but as you can see, it has a time or a uh, or a measurement displayed on the screen. It's got a little one up there, and then when we tap the select button, it goes to a two, shows all of the previous recordings in the memory up to the past five. So yeah, there you go. Um, does that. That's pretty neat. Um, also, another feature that this has is uh, it not only records the uh, the speeds of the object, but it has a second mode. If you press the start button here, hold that down, you can see, oop, 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 what's it doing? What's it doing? What's it doing? Start, okay. Uh, you can see this little bit up here changes to a blinking uh, second sign there. And this is a little complex. Um, so what it does is it records the amount of time in between the first and the second shot. Uh, it's for measuring how fast it takes something to go around a lap, I suppose. Um, the description of this product says it's it's useful for um, the for measuring the speeds of Hot Wheels. Uh, so it could fit a Hot Wheel in there, apparently. But um, again, I'm using it for my own purposes. But it begins recording the second we shoot a f the first object through it. And as you can see, it's recording there. And then it stops recording the second we shoot the next object through it. As you can see, it stopped recording at uh, 9.86 seconds. So, with this, if I can find my second marble here, here it is, we can uh, record the amount of time it takes for the marble to fall into the chamber and me to shoot it again. So, let's do a quick test here. As you can see, it took uh, 0.3 seconds for me to shoot both of those marbles. Obviously, for rapid fire types, that number would drastically decrease. Also, another thing you can do with this is the third and so on shots um, can also be recorded. So if we shoot through, shoot through a second time, and then shoot through some more, it records the times that those objects uh, shoot through as well. Uh, if we press this here, it also records um, those times in the memory. So as you can see, uh, the first one was at 0.91 seconds, and then, you know, 9.10 and 10.64. Um, so if I attach a magazine and load up like 10 marbles, um, if I shoot them rapid fire through the, the BSB, it'll record exactly how much time it takes for me to shoot those 10 marbles. Um, also useful for, for uh, recording rapid fire rates, um, as well as with the other function, recording power, if we can change the mode here. I think you have to just stop it from doing what it's doing before you can change the mode. I don't know. I don't pretend to know how I'm doing anything, like I said. Um, now, for the purpose of recording beat -em on speeds and whatnot, I made this little Lego cradle. It's just an 8x8 plate here. Um, some flat pieces on top, some little uh, corner pieces here. Um, and it fits this perfectly, and it's just meant to lift up the Beastie, um, because sometimes with beat -em on the marbles shoot a little higher than you would expect, and they sort of hit the top of the the timer. Um, so by lifting this up just a little bit, um, it makes the tests a lot more regulated, and uh, it works a lot better that way. Uh, to turn the device off, you just press both of these buttons, and it'll turn off just like that. Uh, so obviously, I'm not 
too educated on this kind of, of device. Um, obviously, this review is a little bit uh, scattered in that respect, but uh, for my purposes, it's pretty useful. If you found this useful for, um, you know, other purposes as well, if, if, if you were looking at this product, maybe for uh, using it for something a little more useful in the classroom or for a scientific experiment of some sort, then um, good. <laughs> I, I can't imagine um, how helpful I can be. But uh, yeah, there is the BSPV. I'll probably do some videos in the future testing out all of my beat -em on and uh, showing off um, how each of them compare to the, to the point, you know, because I can actually record that now. Um, at this point, I'm just rambling, so let's finish it off here. That is about it, guys, and this is iXtrol at iX, signing off. Oh, hey, I forgot to say something that I probably should during the actual recording of the uh, video. Uh, the price of this little device um, is retail around $60. Um, I got it for a little bit cheaper on eBay for about 40 but uh, yeah, not, not that cheap for this little tiny thing. Um, so... Clearly not for the casual beat em on player, but obviously it's it's meant to be like a scientific device. So uh, the price for that reason, I think, is is well reasonable. But yeah, just a little little thing I forgot to say. <clears throat> Professionalism at its finest.